Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Kingfisher's um, Bait and Trace Clinic. Today, I'm going to be doing bronze bream. Just to let you know that the bronze bream are in the trance car and there seems to be a lot of them. Winter is upon us and the water has become cold. Now, the most important thing about our Trace Clinic today is going to be showing you all our products that we're going to use. Pool noodle, very, very important and I'll show you why later on. Good pair of uh, mustard uh, scissors. Gummy stops of your selection. Earbud. Sinkers and of course it depends on what you want. Clear beads, yeah they are, yeah, they are very minute clear beads. If you can't get them, you can obviously use our Kingfisher beads that we do stock. FC fluorocarbon, 35 pound, 10 kilo maxima, red uh, floats. Our number six power swivel, very important that. Our Chinu 1-0, our red bait holder number one, and of course our anti-tangle free sleeves. And it doesn't matter on the color that much, guys. We're gonna be doing two traces, hence the two different hooks that you see. One is gonna be with the Chinu 1-0, and the other one's gonna be with the red bait holder number one. There's two different ways of rigging them, part one and part two. So, to start off with, we're gonna be doing our Chinu 1-0s. Okay, for that we're gonna start off and I'm gonna clear this whole area. So guys what, what we've got here to make this trace is very simple. FC35, I'm gonna take about a meter of it. I just want to quickly open it up. This is our FC fluorocarbon, it's new. Okay, here we go. So we're taking about a meter of our FC fluorocarbon cut that very simply about 30 to 40 centimeters away I'd say about 40 we do what they call a granny knot so to do the granny knot all we're gonna do is take the line over your finger and wrap the tag end around three times once twice and three times Remember, this is the bottom part of it. The sinker will be attached to the, the tag end. Pull it until it starts getting tight. Lubricate. Pull the knot tight. There we go. Very simple, very easy. Now, normally, we'd be using our clear beads over here, and I'm just going to show you. This one I'm going to do with clear beads, and the other one I'll do with our green beads. So there is our first bead. We're going to take our power swivel number six, thread it on, slide it down. And again, we're going to take our clear bead, thread it on, slide it down. If you can't get clear beads, don't worry. We have got the Kingfisher chartreuse ones. They're the soft rubber ones. They don't damage the line at all. Very, very nice and they work extremely well. Okay. now. As I said, that side is going to have the sinker on. This side here is going to be our leader part of it. Now, to finish it off, I'm just turning it around so you guys can see. The leader part, I'm going to do that figure of eight once again. So all I'm going to do, the granny knot, so over, back through once, and twice. There we go. So there's the figure of eight. If I start pulling it down, you'll see the figure of eight starting to form. There it is forming there. Just gonna lubricate it quickly and pull tight. Now, the bottom one's got three on, the top one's got two on. When you're throwing your sinker, there's more pressure on the bottom one. So, hence the three and the two. And also you don't want, when a bronze beam pulls or you get stuck, for it to come over the knot over here. This knot is a lot bigger at the bottom than it is at the top. Okay, so let's go for it. That is our leader part complete. We'll just leave that there. 
Okay, so I'm taking my Maxima 10 kilo. I'm taking about 40 centimeters of Maxima 10 kilo. I'm gonna cut it off with my braid scissors. I'm now gonna take my 10 Chinu. Now the reason we use this is because of that bent back eye, and I'll explain to you as we're going along why that bend is so important. Okay, so we go through the eye of the hook like so, and all we're gonna do is take the tag end and snell it. So to snell it, I'm just gonna use my finger one, two, three, more than enough times, and then take the tag end and push it through the back. There is other ways of snelling, but this is just the quickest and easiest for me to do. So I'll hold in my finger, pull my Maxima line, and you'll see there's a figure of eight forming over there. Bit of lubrication on it, pull tight, and slide down to the eye of the hook. Always remember you're working through the bottom and around the top. And the reason we do that is so it forms pretty much a circle. As you can see there, it forms a circle. Okay guys, there we go. We've snelled our 1 chino hook on. As you can see, I now take my earbud. Uh, you do get them in pink and that, which works very well. Obviously I've got blue for demonstration purposes, easier for you guys to see take our other oval or round um, float but the most important part is to remember that it needs to be red and that is the important part the red float is the tractor to this whole thing okay so what we do is we take our gummy stop lubricate it slightly so it comes off the wire quite nicely put it through the 10 kilo maxima line pull it until it gets to the line and what we do is we actually just pull it down and over. So you can see how it's coming over now. Can you see it guys? And then we just pull it down, down, down. There we go. Thank you. Slide it all the way down to where we want it to sit on our float. And the reason being is it stops the float from going up your line. That's why we use the gummy stop. It's very important. Now, you ask why we use this hook. And the reason being, and this earbud, the earbud does two things. It holds the prawn on nice and straight, but the minute you apply pressure, in other words, when you strike, the water resistance on the actual float does that. It kicks the hook up. Can you see over there how it actually, the earbud pushes against the eye of the hook. That's why we use these hooks. So it actually goes in like that. So it goes in, to the side of the mouth and obviously when you pull that part is what's sitting against the fish's jaw and you get a better hookup. So it'll be nice and straight when you actually push against it, it kicks up. You see how it kicks up, the hook kicks up. It's as simple as that. That's why we use the earbud, that's why we use the one eye chin hook. Okay, next, anti-tangle free sleeve. I just want to cut this nice and neatly so I can put it through. We slide it down around like so take our number six power swivel and we tie a figure of eight so what we do is to tie the figure of eight again I'm just going to use my finger it's easier one two three times around take it back through the tag end and we basically form our figure of eight there it is there a little bit of lubrication and we slide the line onto the actual swivel there we go pull tight Cut our tag end off, like so. Take our anti-tangle free sleeve, slide it over the eye of our swivel and down onto the base there, like so. So there we go. There's our anti-tangle free sleeve and our float and everything done. Now all we have to do is attach our sinker. Now, for instance, if we were using a pear sinker like that, a good, what's the name, trick is to take your, I'm gonna use a three ounce here, pear sinker and around those pliers, you can use side cutters, you can use your scissors. And all we do is we just make a groove in it. Because it's so thick, if it hits against a rock, you damage your line and you lose your sinker. The next time you throw, your sinker's gone. So we make a little groove in it like this just to protect the nylon 
That's all we're trying to do. So we just take it once or twice. Smooth this off quickly. There we go, it's smoothing off nicely. Okay, so what we've done is we've made a nice groove that's hidden. What we now do is we take our fluorocarbon, the sinker side of it, go through the eye, and we just, again, just tie a figure of eight. Three times around, tag in through, slide it down to where you want it to be, pull tight. And if you see, the knot is almost completely hidden by the lead. So if it hits against any of the rocks as you're pulling it in, or muscles or anything like that, it doesn't damage that area that's running around the actual sinker. Okay, so there's just a little trick there to save yourself a bit of time and money. So guys, there is the trace complete. Always remember, when it comes to bronze beam fishing, to keep this shorter than your sinker. So when you actually strike, that the float can kick back before it actually pulls against the sinker. Okay, so you're pulling against the hook first before the sinker actually moves. That's very important. There we go. There's the anti-tangle free sleeve. Basically what it is is it can move around 360 degrees if it's lying flat on the ground. This part of it will be moving all over the place. Okay, doesn't get caught up. It's nice for long distance throwing. Guys, it's as simple as that. There we go. Can't get it any simpler than that. To bait this up with a prawn, I'm gonna do a prawn and chocker bait. Okay, so let's just get this right. Let's get our prawn. What we require for it is our Kingfisher thin latex cotton, a chocker hammer, okay. And of course, a very sharp knife. Okay, let's just cut our prawn open. There's our prawn, and we like to butterfly it. I'm just going to quickly do that. Take it out the shell. Take it out the shell. Why would you do that? So the fish can get to the actual flesh. <laughs> okay, so we take it out the shell makes it easier for the bronze bream to get to the fleshy part. Okay, there we go. So what I've done is I've basically opened it up, butterflied the actual um, prawn, took a hammer, and you just lightly hit it, just to soften it up a bit. Gets more of the smell and flavor out. <clears throat> we then take our thin latex cotton, which I've got here, Okay, the earbud is what we're going to use to actually tie around. So there's the hook, I'm going to go through the center, and there's the earbud. So we're going to just quickly lengthen that so we can move it out the way. I don't know if you can see it there, but shining through this lovely fresh prawn is the earbud. We're going to take it like so. And the reason we use this thin latex cotton, it's a lot softer on the bait. It doesn't damage it as much. And you can use quite a bit more of it to actually secure the bait on. So what we do is we take it and we wrap around the earbud. And that's the important part. That's the part that holds this whole bait together, the earbud. Okay, so we're going to do this all the way up to the top. We then go over the hook lightly, not too many times just enough to secure it and work our way back up. Break it off, our thin latex cotton off. We slide that down like so. There is our prawn bait, ready for our bronze beam. Now, let me just show you how the bait's actually gonna work when the fish bites. Your bronze beam's gonna come along, he's gonna bite on it. You get the pull, and then when you actually strike, the resistance of the water pushes down on the float, and you can see how that hook actually pushes into the side. So it goes into the side of the jaw a lot easier than if you didn't have that earbud. 
So basically, that's basically what's happening. I'll show you again, let me just open it up. Nice and big. Hook straight, you strike, water resistance pushes that down and then the hook kicks back. It's as simple as that guys. Just gets a better hook set. Um, you hook the fish deeper in the mouth as well and it doesn't come off as easily. <clears throat> so there's our prawn bait. Another thing that we can do to make it a lot more attractive is to add some of our scent to it. So let me just grab some of that scent stuff. Um, as you know, bronze bream love banana flavor. So we've got our dyed banana flavored spray. And all we do is we just lightly spray it on. It adds more color to it. And as you know, bronze bream are attracted to reds and oranges and that. And that flavor of the banana essence basically disperses in the water and it attracts the fish a lot faster. And it's a lot more colorful and yeah, it's just a bonus all the way around. So there's the trace made up and it smells good enough to eat. <laughs> there we go guys. When you go bronze bream fishing, that's what you need to do. It's as easy as that. Now, this is doing a chocker bait, a blob chocker bait for bronze bream. Very simply, what we require, kingfisher thin latex cotton, our standard kickback trace, helicopter rig, chocker hammer, thin, thin knife, sharp knife, and a piece of chocker. So we just quickly start it off, cut the chocker open, take out the insides, like so. This is a harder bait. It stays in the water a lot longer. Um, obviously, if there's bronze beam around, there's cob around, this type of bait will stay on longer, um, especially when there's little blacktail, carantine, little peckers around. Okay, what do we do? I'm just gonna quickly throw this away. So what we do is you'll have a skin side, which is that side of it, which is the hard part, and you'll have a fleshy side, which is the inside part. The chocker, when you open it, the fleshy side is on the inside and the hard skin side is on the outside. So we're gonna just put it down with the skin side facing up. Take our chocker hammer and we just beat it a bit to soften it up. Okay, so we've used the thick side of the chocker hammer to break the skin down. Now we're gonna use the um, fine side to squash and move the chocker apart. All we're trying to do is expose as much of the flesh as possible and as much of the smell as possible. Thin side. There we go. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my knife, cut a little piece off. And as you can see, it's gone totally translucent. You can see right through it, and it's very, very oily now. Let's take our blob chocker and our thin latex. And again, we're gonna wrap most of the bait around that earbud part. With the flesh side, we're gonna put the hook through it. That's the one chin hook. And all we're gonna do now is just basically wrap it around our earbud and our hook. So there we go. That's basically all we've done. We just wrapped it around. We're then gonna take our thin latex cotton and we're wrapping it quite tightly around the earbud, which is this part of it here. And onto the shank of the hook and back again. So you can feel it's all soft, it's all squishy, it's long and thin. There we go, pull down our gummy stop so it's where we want it to be. And like I always say, the gummy stop stops that float from coming down onto your line. Now how this works is the little quarantine, blacktail, chor chores, whatever they might be, come along and they, they nibble on it, bite on it, you get it. Eventually the bronze beam will come around or a baby cob. They bite on the hook, pull you down. When you strike, 
That float over there pushes down and the hook basically kicks back. You can see how that hooks actually come completely almost in a circle form there. There it is there, there's the point of it. So that's pretty much what happens with the choco bait. It's as easy as that guys. Go out there, use choco, it works extremely well, especially later in the season, that October period, the choco seems to work the best. There we go. Quick and as easy as that to do your blob choco bait for your bronze bream.